Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video, we'll do some simple metrics calculations to help you getting a deeper understanding of list indexing, list comprehension, and nested list comprehension. Please make sure you have watched the videos on list comprehension and nested loops first to better follow along. First, we have to understand how to create a matrix in Python. And let us take this matrix here as an example. To create a matrix, we need to define a list of lists. So let us define matrix here as, and then we are opening two squared brackets, and the inner squared bracket is containing the row entries of this matrix. So let us define one and two here, and we got the first row of this matrix. To define the second row of this matrix, we just need to define another list inside this list. So we are defining a new list here, which is containing three and four. And if we're executing that, we have successfully created a matrix. So let us access the one in this matrix, so this one here. Now we are calling our matrix and we are using list indexes now. So we want to get the first list inside this list of lists, right? So we need to define a zero index here to access this first list. After we have accessed that, we need to access the very first element inside this inner list and that is also zero. If we're executing that, we are getting the one. As another example, to get the two here, we will just define our second index as one and we're getting the two. So to get the four out of this matrix here, so this one here, we are just defining matrix and then we are accessing the second list here by one and then we need to access the second element by another one here. So if we're executing that, we are getting our four here. So to get the three, to make this really clear, we just need to define the zero here and now we are getting the three. So that should be clear, right? Now let us calculate the determinant of this matrix. The determinant of this matrix is just the product of this diagonal minus the product of this diagonal. So we can achieve that by our index approach, right? We are accessing, firstly, the one. That is achieved by accessing the very first list and then the very first element by zero and zero times, and now we are needing the four here. That is matrix of the second list here and the second element. So one and one here minus, and now we are needing the two here, which is the first list here, so zero, and the second element, so one, times, and now we need the three here, and that is matrix, and then the second here, second list, and the first element of that. So let's execute that, and as we said before, we are getting the minus two. Let us approach to a more complex task, and that is matrix calculations with nested loops. Our task now is to add a one to each element in this matrix, so that you get this matrix here. By the way, you are kindly invited to pause the video right now and solve it on your own. I'm moving on right now. Let us define the outer loop first. That is for i in range. And now you could type in two, as you know, this matrix has two rows but we want to keep it more flexible, so we are taking the length of this list of lists. So if you have three rows, this would be three, and so on. For our inner loop, we need for j in range, and then again, the length of this matrix, and then we need the index of the outer iterator here. This might be confusing right now, but I'm going through it step by step in a second. Inside this inner iteration, we have to assign the matrix and then we need two indexes, which is the outer iterator and the inner iterator. And that should be equal to the same, so i and j here, plus one. And if we're executing that and actually print out our matrix, we are getting what we wanted, right? Now, what is happening here step by step? This outer loop is being executed triggering in its first iteration, so i equals to zero, the inner loop, which is running in completion, as we learned in our last tutorial. So this is running for j in range. 
length of the matrix of the zeros element here. So that is, we got the length of this inner list here, right? Which is two again. So this is running and now we are taking the outer iterator, taking matrix of zero and the first j would be zero here, is equal to the same zero, zero plus one. So we are adding a one to the first one here. The second iteration of this inner loop is j equals to one and that is in range length of matrix and it is still zero in the outer iteration here. So we are still in our first list here. So that is matrix of still zero and j is one now, zero and one. And that is equal to matrix zero and one plus one, which is nothing else than the two here plus one. Now the second iteration is being triggered for the outer loop and that is i is equal to one. This is triggering the inner loop and that is for j in range length of matrix of one, which is triggering my second list here. And that is giving me matrix of my i equals to one and j in the first iteration of zero is equal to matrix of one and j equal to zero plus one and that is nothing else than our three plus one. Now the next iteration and the last iteration is for j one in range length of matrix one matrix of one and one equals to matrix of one and one plus one. So we are adding a one to the four here. By the way you can write this more professional here by just deleting that and using the plus equal to operator and adding a one here. This is just doing the same thing as before. This procedure is very good for a better understanding of nested loops and working with iterators as indexes. But there is a more smarter way to solve that and to avoid the problem that we are assigning a new matrix to the variable matrix, which was this matrix before, as you remember. So let's use nested list comprehension to even make this more professional. But before doing so, let us reset our matrix to the original matrix. And that was 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 as the rows. We are executing that and got our old matrix and now we can get started. Let us define a new variable first, new matrix here. And now whenever you are performing a nested list comprehension, you have to understand that you are doing the same thing as here, but you are working yourself from bottom to the top here. So we are starting, so open up two square brackets first, and then we are starting at the very last line here. So that is matrix of i and j plus one. You do not need to do an assignment here, as this is done by the list comprehension itself. So that is for j in range, so that is the next line here. And then we are just using the exact same syntax from above. And after that, you're moving to the next line, which is the first line here. And that is again the same for i in range length of the matrix. And now let's pray and hope that this is working. Let me check it again. Let's print that out. And yes, we got the new matrix with an added up element of one. Again, the iteration logic is the same one as above. This is just a more professional way to implement this nested loop. Let's move on to transpose our matrix. To transpose a matrix, you just have to switch the rows and the columns. So this row here is getting the column of this transpose matrix and this row is getting this column. Again, you're kindly invited to solve this on your own so pause the video right now. My approach in solving this would be that I firstly try to get those elements in the right order, meaning that I'm trying to get the order of 1, 3, 2 and 4. And how can I achieve that? Well, I'm starting with a simple loop here 
or nested loop to be more specific. That is for i in range and this is nothing new. This is what we did all the time. Length of the matrix. Now my inner loop is a bit different. I need a iterator which is moving from list to list here. And I can achieve that by for j in this matrix. Okay. And after that I'm telling j to index i. And of course I have to print that out, otherwise we wouldn't see anything. And from executing that, we're getting the values in the right, or in quotation mark, the right order. And that is 1, 3, 2 and 4. As in this matrix here, right? So what is happening here in this loop in detail? The first iteration, i equals to 0, triggers the first iteration of the inner loop. That is j equals to 0. So we are getting 0 for j here and 0 for i here. This is giving us the 1, which is giving us the, this one here. Then the next inner iteration is running and that is j equals to 1. So we are moving to the next list of lists. And we are still having i as 0 here, so we are getting the 3 out of this second list. Okay, And now we are getting i equals to 1 and j starts at 0 again. So we are getting 0 and 1 here and this is why we are getting 2 right here. And the same for the very last iteration which is i equals to 1 and j equals to 1. Then we got 1 1 here which is giving us the 4. Now how can we use that for a nest list comprehension? Well we are doing the exact same thing as we did all the time before. We are just moving ourselves from bottom till top. So let us define, let's just define transpose here. And now we are just typing in what we just written down here. So that is, opening two squared brackets, j of this iterator for j in matrix. That is this line here. Now we get to the next loop and that is for i in range of the length of this matrix here. And if we're executing that and actually print out this variable, we are getting what we wanted to get. And that is our transpose matrix. So this is the first row, 1 and 3. And this is the second row, 2 and 4. With that being said, I thank you very much for watching. If you want to support my channel, please subscribe and like this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Have a nice Sunday. See you next time. Bye-bye.